Why can't Lebanese leaders sort out their own problems? Why do they need help, outside help? And why do outsiders want to get involved? Is that involvement likely to be a help or a hindrance? This is Inside Story. Program. I'm David Foster. Lebanon's rival political leaders are continuing talks in Qatar, hoping to reach some kind of agreement to end the political crisis that has seen the worst fighting in that country since the civil war ended in 1990. But some of them won't even sit in the same room as each other. Beth and Howe reports. The streets are quiet in Beirut. It is a tentative peace following days of violence that has left more than 65 dead and over 250 injured. Fierce fighting broke out in the Lebanese capital after the government made two controversial decisions. It fired the head of airport security and declared its intention to dismantle Hezbollah's telecommunications network, which the group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, condemned. This decision is a declaration of war and the beginning of war by the Walid Jumblad government on the resistance and its arms on behalf of America and Israel. The violence abated after the government unilaterally reversed both decisions and the Arab League brokered a deal in which peace talks could commence outside of the country. Hundreds of kilometres away in the Gulf state of Qatar, the feuding political leaders now attempt to find a resolution. Lebanon's Prime Minister, Fouad Senyora, is joined by other government representatives at the discussions, along with Hezbollah and Christian leaders from the opposition. Arab League Secretary General Amr Moussa is calling for Lebanon to form a national unity government after Hezbollah walked out in 2006. The talks will also centre on the creation of a new electoral law and the election of a new president. The country has been in political deadlock since President Emile Lahoud's term finished in November last year. Arab states have lent their support to the Qatari-led initiative, including Syria, which backs the opposition, and Saudi Arabia, who are behind the Senora government. The talks coincide with a visit to Egypt by US President George Bush, who expressed his support for the peace initiative and current regime. It is clear that Hezbollah, which has been funded by Iran, uh, can no longer justify its position as a defender against Israel when it turns on its own people. And this is a defining moment. It's a moment that requires us to stand strongly with the Sonora government. Despite strong backing from all sides, tension is evident at the talks in Qatar's capital, Doha. The Lebanese government say all issues are up for discussion. However, Hezbollah refused to tackle the subject of disarming militias, leading to a further impasse in the already delicate negotiations. Join us to discuss the latest Lebanese mediation efforts in Doha. Jamil Marui, editor-in-chief of the Lebanese newspaper The Daily Star in Beirut, Kamal Wazni, a Lebanese political analyst, and also in Beirut, Ragid El Sol, a writer and political analyst. Thanks very much for talking to us, for coming on Inside Story. Let's go to Jamil Maroui, first of all. Uh, since you're at the talks, are they getting anywhere? Yes, I think we are. Uh, I think we are. The, the gerry gerrymandering was a stickler uh, to, get, to, get, uh, to get ironed out. I think we're getting there. Um, it is, of course, uh, very nice that uh, we've moved from a lot of uh, more uh, ha hairy and uh, hair-raising issues to gerrymandering. And, uh, but I think we're getting there. I think, I think there will be a breakthrough. I we're, think so. we're talking with gerrymandering about the setting up of particular uh, districts, areas of Beirut in particular, how they would be divided up as constituencies. Correct. So what's going to be the biggest sticking point would you say, Ragged El Sol? I think one of the sticking points is the representation of the Maronite and the Christian communities in general. I think there is a feeling of despair and uh, anxiety about uh, the level and the extent of the representation of the Christians in Lebanese parliament. And there is a, a strong pressure in, uh, to increase the representation of the Christians. Why won't anybody talk about guns? Kamil Wazni, Hezbollah's guns. Well, uh, it's not the right time uh, to talk about the gun of the Hezbollah, especially when there's a, a clear statement from President Bush who sponsored Israel to attack Lebanon during last year's war. 
Uh, we still have enemy in our border. Still, uh, the United States arm in Israel uh, increase its defense budget to over $30 billion over 10 years. We cannot uh, have uh, the resistance weapon uh, disarm at the same time all, uh, all the front uh, in our uh, south front, we have Israeli uh, statement. Uh, is fine, Israeli fine. Let, 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 let's clear up this particular uh, idea of resistance. This is um, what Hezbollah says these weapons are for use um, against Israel, to defend the country against Israel. These weapons were used against Lebanese people last week. That's not resistance, is it? Well, obviously, uh, the, the decision that uh, uh, by, uh, taken by the government is to really to to bring Hassan Said Hassan Nasrallah and the resistance to justice, and they want to treat him as a criminal and uh, disarm uh, indirectly the resistance. So basically, what the resistance did is protect itself. Uh, it seems that there's conspiracy by this government. Uh, they 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 don't want this to happen. So they did a surgical operation to prevent a larger catastrophe against Lebanon. So in that sense. No uh, weapon of the resistance were used in Lebanon. Basically, what used in Lebanon is uh, the, 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 the government of Senura and its militia used the weapon and attack a peaceful demonstration. And obviously, everybody has a weapon aside from the resistance weapon. And that's what been used in this uh, skirmish, I call it. I don't call it a war or I don't call it anything more than... Uh, just uh, a surgical well, okay. operation. Okay, more than 60 people died in what, in what you describe as a skirmish. Jamil Maroui, let me come to you. Um, you represent, through your newspaper, by and large, the citizens of your country. When it's said that these weapons, these Hezbollah weapons, were not used against Lebanese people, is that the way the people of your country feel? Well, first of all, I need to qualify that I don't represent my the whole people of Lebanon, I represent the point of view and whatever I can observe. Uh, of course it's a big mistake, of course it's a sequence of mistakes that, we, that the political system in Lebanon has been committing almost systematically, although uh, it's uh, sort of uh, with no rhyme or reason uh, in, 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 in many, many cases across the last three years. Uh, and this is a, a, a huge blunder, certainly, uh, which of course led to the Doha conference. Uh, otherwise, why, if it were not a blunder across the board and a blunder in slow motion in, in many cases across the three years, uh, the Lebanese political system, the Lebanese parties, Hezbollah included, uh, the majority included, need to look and reform the system in order to accommodate the, the fact that we are, for 40 or 50 years, uh, being aggressed by the Israelis. We are Israel's whipping boy for 50 years. It's, it's not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of history. Uh, fact is, uh, we did not have a state for 15, 20 years because of the civil war. Fact is, the state was under the control and thumb of the Syrians for 12 years. Add them up, that's 30 years. After the, the assassination of uh, Prime Minister Hariri, the political system, Hezbollah included and perhaps most responsible, should have looked at and must look at now, as they have, as they have come uh, uh, to find necessary to do, to look at the political system and its reform. Uh, let's go to Ragged Al Salb in Beirut for us. The UN Security Council Resolution 1721 said that all non-state parties should be disarmed. Hezbollah has not agreed to that. It, it hasn't happened. How can you have a discussion about Lebanon's future if that issue isn't being addressed here? Will it not all boil up again, whatever's decided in Doha, if that isn't addressed now? Well, certainly at one point it should be addressed, but you know the opposition uh, suggests that there is a distinction between uh, militias and armed parties and the resistance movement. The fact that the resistance movement committed some mistakes, uh, a sort of an aberration or fault, does not delegitimize the resistance movement at all. We, uh, in Lebanon, we need the resistance movement because, as Mr. Mru and Dr. Wadney suggested, that there are incursions, there, are, uh, uh, there is an aggressive Israeli pol uh, policy that undermines Lebanon's uh, 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 independence. Uh, so 
in, in that way, I think the resistance movement is still a need. Whether it is Hezbollah or some, somebody else, we need the resistance uh, urgently. Uh, Kamal Wazni, let, let's go back a little bit, talk about Lebanon's constitution, which sets out that uh, there must be a Maronite Christian as president, uh, the Speaker of the, the House must be a Shia, and that the Prime Minister must be a Sunni. Uh, this is always portrayed as something that uh, perhaps the Shia elements in the country uh, don't really like any longer because when it was set out there was a cr Christian majority and that isn't now the case. Do you think the constitution, the very basis on which Lebanon is founded, now needs to be changed? No, nobody is talking about the change in the constitution. We respect the constitution. We, I think all the party, including Hezbollah, respect the Taif. Nobody is looking to address uh, the constitution. All they look into is, is to implement what it agreed on in the Taif agreement. So the, this is Lebanon. This is the, uh, no other uh, political uh, system work other than the one agreed in the, at the Taif agreement. And I think this is not a point of discussion. All they're looking right now uh, is a participation by a major element of our of, of the Lebanese society, which is uh, the Shiite, which has been uh, excluded from government for the past uh, two and a half year, and there is part of the Christian who hasn't participated in in government. So the the issue at this at this uh, uh, meeting in Doha is to address this issue because really uh, n there is no victorious in in Lebanon. Uh, except those people who come together and unite the country. Otherwise, uh, we all a loser in this country, and we're looking for implementing the Taif Accord, no more, no less. Uh, Mr. Marie, editor of the Lebanese Daily Star, big newspaper in your country, whatever's agreed in Doha, if anything, is agreed. Will it last? Because there are those suggesting that people will, will sign something that's put in front of them, knowing that within nine months there are going to be parliamentary elections and the whole situation can change anyway. Um, the situation of the country is, has progressively uh, moved to tatters. We are in tatters. Now, when we say, would it stick, would it not stick, if it doesn't stick, then it's going to be shredded. The country is going to be shredded. Um, now, I don't think it's in the interest of any party for this to happen. Therefore, yes, I think that the Doha agreement uh, is, a, is a first step in a long journey. Uh, we have to take it a step at a time. And it will take some time before it becomes something that is permanent. Uh, for me to say that it is going to be there in two years is, is just really a big claim that is not, I cannot substantiate. But I, I must say that uh, the fear of uh, breakdown uh, will touch Hezbollah, will touch uh, all communities. Uh, and, and therefore, I see that this, uh, uh, this, this agreement has to stick. Yeah, well, as uh, they often stick. say, in different circumstances, you have to hit rock bottom before you know there's nowhere else to go. We're going to take a short break here on Inside Story. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at the international players, their influence on Lebanese politics. Stay with us. If you 